Suki, you wanna be in a video? This is my girl. Suki, say hi. Say hi. Hey guys, long time no see. It has been such a long time since I filmed a video and even longer I think since I've like had my face in one. Um, I've been doing a lot of bullet journal videos where it's just my hands. So I probably look like ridiculously different from the last time you saw me and my hair is like a whole different situation. I'm wearing glasses. So <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping to get back into the swing of things. I, for a lot of reasons, have basically had no time to do my YouTube channel and I'm hoping to change that and make time for it in the future so keep your eyes peeled for more videos. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this journal. I've been making journals for a while now and it's time for me to migrate into a new bullet journal. Um, previously I've been using the Loistrom 1917 and I really love it but I thought why not try to make my own bullet journal so I can make it exactly the way I want. It is seven and a half inches tall and five inches wide. It has this really beautiful embroidery on the front and the pages are dotted. Um, it also has some really pretty end papers, which I picked out for it, and two little ribbons. And it has about 260 pages in it, so it's a little bit thicker than the Loistrom journals. I'm just gonna show you the process of me making this. If you are interested in learning how to bookbind, please watch this video, but I also suggest watching Sea Lemon on YouTube's videos um, because that's basically how I learned to bookbind, and my style is really similar to hers because of that. And she is, goes a lot more into depth um, on how to do things than I'm going to because this is just going to be sort of like how I did it and not like how you should do it, if that makes sense. So if you'd like to see how I made this journal, stay tuned and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so the first thing that I'm doing for this bullet journal is printing out my dotted pages. So you don't have to have your bullet journal with dotted pages, but I really love it because I find that it helps me to create straight lines, but it doesn't look as cluttered on the page as say lines would. So um, I went online, all I did was just Google search like the dot grid PDF and I like, found one that I liked. I calculated the number of pages that I wanted for my book. I think it came out to like roughly 64 pages that I printed out. So basically all I did was print this out double-sided um, so that the dots are on both sides. So the next step is going to be folding my pages into signatures. For a book with pages this thin, I do signatures of eight just because it's a lot less uh, time consuming to bind it. And I find that the paper is thin enough that eight signatures are fine. Some people, like if you do this the right way, will tell you, you know, that you need to like fold each page individually and then stack them. And I'm too lazy. I just grab bundles of eight and I fold them and <laughs> crease them with my hand because I couldn't find my bone folder. You know how this, how it goes. After I had got my seven sets of eight pages that were folded in half, the next thing that I would typically do, like up to a couple weeks ago, would be to go ahead and trim those pages. I'm gonna kind of show you how I would do it. So the way that I used to do it, I'm gonna show you really briefly, is I would just create a jig with my paper trimmer so that I could trim each signature once it was folded down to the size that I wanted so that all the pages would lay basically flat. I do this instead of trimming the pages afterwards because I find that going in with an X-Acto knife and trying to trim a whole book that way, it just doesn't work. This is the way that I have done it up until now. However, I just bought a fancy new paper guillotine that cuts whole books. Like you can like stick a Harry Potter book in there and it'll freaking cut it in half. So I'm actually going to bind this book without trimming any of the pages and then once it's glued I'm going to trim it down to size. Alright so the next step is that I'm going to mark with a pencil where I want the holes to be for binding this book. Um, I typically do anywhere between an inch to an inch and a half apart um, on the sides of the paper so I'm just measuring those dots out where I want them and I do this like fancy little trick where you like stack them all neatly and then you use your ruler. I use a quilting ruler because it's nice and thick and see-through. It's amazing for anything especially if you're a bullet journal. Get a quilting ruler. So I'm just gonna take a block of wood and put my paper on it and using my awl I'm going to punch a hole in each of the where each of the little marks are on the paper. Um, so that I get holes in my paper. If you don't have an awl and you can't find one, I got mine at like Joann's. You can get them basically anywhere. 
But if you're like lazy and you're like, I'm not sure I'm gonna like bookbinding, why would I buy a tool that's like basically just for that? Um, you can use a nail. That's what I used the first couple books that I made and it works just as well. So now I'm starting the binding process. A lot of people like to use waxed thread and while wax thread is great, I find it really hard to find. Um, basically, whenever I've gotten it, I've had to order it online. So I am maybe flying against convention and like maybe people are going to comment in the comments and be like, you're doing it wrong. But I just use heavy duty sewing thread and double it up and I don't bother waxing it. I think it does get like a little knotty um, more than wax thread would, but honestly, I feel like it's kind of worth it for me for it to not be a pain. Usually I would use white thread um, so that you don't see the thread running through the signatures when you're using the book. But for the purposes of this video so you can see what's going on, I'm going to use blue. I'm going to thread my needle and just do a big old double knot. I'm using a curved needle. I bought this in a set that was meant for upholstery sewing, however it works perfectly for what I need it. And uh, the use of the curved needle will soon become apparent. So I just tie a big old knot like three or four times at the end of my thread and go in. And so for the first page, you basically want to go like in and out of the holes one way and then right back the other way. So after that first signature is done, basically what you're gonna do is go straight into the next one, come out the hole, the first hole, and then you're going to thread your needle down through the thread on one side of the hole below it and up through the other side. Describing it is really pointless. You just have to sort of like look and see what I'm doing. And then you're gonna go right back into the hole that you went through and keep on going all the way through. When I get to the end of this signature, I loop my thread through the like one piece of thread at the bottom and then I actually like loop it back through itself. So it creates like a tiny little knot. And the reason I do this is I just find that it helps the signatures to not like slide around as much on the ends when I'm putting it in my book press. So yeah. So as you're coming back to do your third signature, this is the way you're gonna do basically every other signature there. What you're gonna do is, you know, go into the first hole, out the second hole, and then this is where the curved needle really, really helps. You're just gonna loop it straight through the stitch that you made on the signature below, and then you're going to go back through the hole you just went through and repeat. If you don't have a curved needle, a straight needle will do. You'll just have to put it in and then open up the book, the pages of the book, and like fish it back out and then stick it through again. Briefly, I'm going to show you what to do if you run out of thread. So basically what you wanna do is wherever you run out of thread, just tie a knot um, on the signature below it, on the stitch on the signature below, and make sure it's really good and tight, and then you're just gonna string up your thread again and start like wherever you were. And that's also how you're going to tie up the ends of the book when you finish. Now I've finished sewing the pages of my book together. So what I'm going to do is put it into my book press. If you don't have a book press, you can just do this under two big heavy books. Um, and I'm going to put it in my book press and I'm going to add two layers of glue to the spine. Now the glue I'm using is called PVA, polyvinyl adhesive. It's basically a fancier version of Elmer's glue. Um, I do suggest that you actually use this um, rather than Elmer's glue. El Elmer's glue will do the job, but it might be a little bit more brittle and it might kind of yellow and turn your pages ugly after a while. So just be warned. And a little hack that I have is I have put a piece of packing tape on the edges of my book press so that the glue will not stick to it. So I can be really messy with my glue and the book will still come off cleanly and I'll just trim the little pieces of glue off the edge. I'm going to put this in the book press and I'm going to do two to three layers of glue depending on how sort of thickly the layers go on. And then I will be back. While my book is drying in the book press, I'm going to show you how I'm going to make the cover of my book. So most of the books that I make for my shop are linen bound. Um, sometimes I use a different type of fabric if I find a print that I really love, usually cotton, but uh, linen is my favorite thing to use. I love the texture of it. I think it's so beautiful and I just think it makes the book feel really luxurious and I don't know, amazing. So I decided with this book I wanted to do a little bit of experiment. So I'm experimenting with embroidering on my linen before I 
make it into book cloth and attach it to my book. So <laughs> it's an experiment, we'll see how it goes, but spoiler alert, um, I'm filming this afterward and I'm really happy with the results. <laughs> so I cut a piece of linen to the size that I would need for my book and I kind of roughly estimated where I wanted the design that I was going to make to be and I put my embroidery hoop on there tightened it all down, make sure it was all good to go, and then I just basically used, uh, I think this is called a back stitch, or a ladder stitch, one of those things. It's been a long time since I learned embroidery. I remember everything, I just don't remember what it's called. And I just created this cute little tree design, um, which I really love. Basically you could do whatever you want, um, and you could probably make it more complicated than this. The only reason I didn't do anything too crazy is I did not want there to be a lot of stuff on the back. I wanted it to lie fairly flush with the adhesive that I'm going to use to turn this into book cloth. So I didn't want there to be a whole bunch of like knots and stuff on the back of my fabric. I wanted it to be like pretty flat laying. So with that in mind, I did a pretty simple little design, but I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. And now let's get started making this into book cloth. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to iron this fabric um, first with the steam on to get out any creases and just make sure it's nice and flat and I'm going to be extra careful working around the embroidery. Um, the embroidery thread that I'm using is cotton based and I just want to be careful that I don't burn it. So next I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to use something called Ultra Bond and it's an adhesive and this is like the ultra ultra good adhesive I strongly recommend using this and not the like lighter adhesive version of this You want the strongest adhesive you can come up with and it's basically an iron-on adhesive So what you're gonna do is like I pull out my sheet It's about the same size as my fabric and I'm gonna lay it down and then just iron the crap out of it Important don't have the steam on your iron for this part um, because it will mess it'll mess it up. You don't want that. I'm just going to iron it until I can tell that it is like fully tapped down and I'm going to take special care to make sure that it's ironed really well over the embroidery that as much of that adhesive is like getting in there with all the thread as possible. I'm gonna let it cool for just a second then I'm gonna pull the backing the paper backing off of the adhesive and as you can see it's all clear and pretty and basically what I'm gonna do is just lay a piece of tissue paper down right on top of that and this is gonna make it so that there's a layer that's absorbent um, and helps to soak up the glue and make your fabric stick to the boards that you're gonna glue it to without the glue coming through the fabric but also so it's like still you know will stick it it makes sense yeah, I'm just ironing this down until I can see the whole outline and then I'm going to take my scissors and clean up the edges and trim it so it's a nice beautiful thing. Look, it looks like you bought it from the store like this and I'm really happy with how well it ironed down. This was the part I was very nervous about. Now that we have our book paper, uh, let's make a book. So the first thing that I'm going to do is cut the boards down to the correct size. I usually make the book to be about 3 sixteenths of an inch larger than the size of the paper because you want it to be just a little bit, a little bit longer than the paper. And then I'm going to cut the spine to be about the exact same size as the height of my text block. Is what it's called? A text block? I'm going to cut the little piece for the spine to be about the same height as the book. I usually just like eyeball it. Probably shouldn't do that though. You should probably measure it. I'm not going to do that though. I'm going to eyeball it. And then I cut the two main boards to be about an eighth inch smaller than the length of the paper because we want a little bit to stick out over the side but we want there to be about a quarter inch gap in between those boards so that the book can open and close nicely. So what I'm going to do is basically just make sure that I've got this first board lined up well so that the embroidery will be centered um, on it and then I'm going to just cover the crap out of it with the polyvinyl adhesive and glue it down. And after I glue it down, I'm gonna kind of go over and like smooth it out, make sure there's no air bubbles, make sure it's like lying really nicely. So I'm gonna do that with all three. It really helps if you have a ruler to set uh, on the bottom to make sure you're doing everything nice and straight. Don't wanna crookedly align the book here. Once your boards are all glued down and you've made sure that there's no air bubbles in the back, um, what we're going to do is trim the paper down um, so that you have about between a half inch and an inch, inch and a half if you're feeling liberal, uh, of space. And I'm also going to trim the corners off so that the there's a 
Mm, it's, I, I, it's hard to describe how you do this, but basically just like look at how I'm doing it. And I leave like a tiny, tiny amount um, on the edge. So like not, don't trim it right to the corner of the board. Oh, and so what I'm using for boards is chipboard. This stuff is really cheap. You can order it on Amazon or get it basically anywhere. Or if you have like a leftover pad of paper, you can steal it off the back if you're done with it. That's, yeah, it's a good good way to get things. So now basically what I'm gonna do is like fold up these flaps and make them nice and as smooth as possible. So yay, now I have this super awesome cover for my book and the next thing we're gonna wanna do is attach it. But first, I'm going to let this cover dry probably under my book press or under something heavy um, for just a little bit longer because we don't want the boards to warp. Now, as you can see, the glue is dry on my text block. I'm going to kind of trim off any excess glue that was like hanging out on the sides and the front so it's nice and flat. So right now you're gonna get to see me using my fancy, fancy guillotine, which I'm gonna use to cut the paper and oh my gosh, look what smooth edges it gives. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm in love with this device. It costs a lot of money. So if, unless you're gonna like make lots of books professionally, you probably don't need one. But it's, it's great, you should get one. <laughs> and the next thing that I'm going to do is select my end pages and my ribbons. So I try to kind of coordinate colors. I've got this really pretty like pink watercolory paper that I'm gonna use for my end pages. And to go with it, I decided on a blue and a pink ribbon because that's what I had in my stash. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is put a pretty thick layer of coat on the text block about halfway down. And I'm going to glue one ribbon on, add another layer of glue, then glue the next ribbon on, and another layer of glue. And then I'm going to start adding the end pages on. So what you wanna do with the end pages is use a brush. I use a flat tip brush because is the best and you're going to apply glue in like a teeny little line right on the edge of the block of pages the page block is that what it's called text block page block I don't know I keep getting confused you guys when I say teeny I don't mean like it doesn't need to be that teeny like you want the glue to stick to the paper because this is what's holding the cover of your book onto your book so you don't want to like wimp out on glue here I put a fair amount of glue but you just make sure it's a nice neat little line I'd say like between an eighth and a fourth inch thick, nice little line of glue. Then stick down your end page, whoop, right on top, and uh, then, then you're good. I'm gonna flip it over, do the same thing on the other side, and once those are both done, I'm basically gonna take a scrap piece of paper, so this is like a piece of dotted paper that was extra, was left over, and I'm going to cut it down so it's a little bit smaller than like one of the pages would be, and I'm just gonna cover this in glue and glue it around the spine of the book. This just holds everything together, makes it nice and beautiful and crisp and like, this is like your insurance. This is like making sure everything's gonna stay together. And uh, so I'm gonna glue it to both sides and then I'm gonna kind of use my hands to like press it down onto the spine so that it kind of sandwiches the ribbons in there and everything is tight and secure. All right, we're on to my favorite step. This is when the book, this is when the board goes on the book. This is the best part. So I'm gonna pull out the book cover that we made and the first thing that I do is stick the block of pages on there and just sort of like see how it's gonna go, see where it's gonna line up so I have an idea of how it's going to glue. Then the next thing that I'm going to do is take a piece of scrap paper and I'm gonna stick it underneath the first, in between the uh, end pages that we put on there. And then I'm just gonna cover the top of that end page with glue. And you wanna use like a lot of glue. A a tough amount of glue and I always wait and do the corners last because the corners you do not want those corners to peel up and so I do the corners last so that the glue is like really wet and really tacky. I'm gonna have it positioned where I want on the book cover and then I'm just going to fold it over, fold the top of the co cover over, smooth it all down, make sure it's lined up really well. This is like you have like two seconds after you do this to make little adjustments and then it's stuck on there. Now the next thing, I'm gonna flip it back onto the other side, open it up and just smooth that paper down. Make sure it's gluing, make sure there's no air bubbles stuck in there and make sure it's like nice and smooth and laying flat. So once I've done that, I'm just gonna repeat that same process on the other side and guys, our book is done. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm so, so happy with this, how it, I'm so, so happy with how this bullet journal turned out 
and I'm so excited to migrate into it next week and to show you all how I'm going to do it. I'm just stoked. So please, please, please stay tuned for that video. One last thing we're going to want to do is put it back into the book press or under those heavy books and let it dry there for like a long time because you don't want those boards to warp. You don't want a warped book. That would not be fun. Um, so you want it to dry all squished flat and um, happy and pretty. Oh, and one last thing that I'm going to do, I like to like feed the little book ribbons in and then trim them off at the end and I finish them off with a little bit of clear nail polish to stop them from fraying. This is actually a matte clear nail polish which I bought thinking that it would be a good idea to paint it on my nails. It was not so now I use it for crafts. Please let me know in the comments if you liked this, if you like the way it turned out. I hope you did because I made this video for you. And if you're interested, you thought this was great but you're like I don't want to bind a book. That seems labor intensive. Uh, I sell these on my shop and I do custom ones. So if you're like, man, I really wish I could have a purple book with a unicorn embroidered on the front, like I can make that for you. So yeah, um, my shop is going to be linked in the box down below if you'd like to give it a look. I'd really appreciate that. All right, I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video hopefully soon. Hopefully not like in six months. I think that's how long it's been. It's bad. All right, bye. So now, as you can see, I have finished. Suki, stop it. This is what happens when you get a corgi. Lots of people, they see me and they say, I love your corgi, I want a corgi. This is what happens. Suki, quiet. No.